term and why that might have been seen as problematic by, uh, by some of the students, maybe even threatening? Um, I, don't, I don't see how someone would rationally think it was threatening. Um, I, I could see how it might challenge their existing ideas, but for me that's, that's the spirit of the university, is challenging ideas that you already have. And I don't know who this came from. I would be interested to see the original complaint or complaints because, like, I don't really have any context, like, as to what exactly their problem was. Sorry, can I, um, sorry to interrupt, but can I just ask Lindsay to maybe just provide us with a full thing? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nathan, I don't, yeah. I, I just like to hear the whole, like, your, what, 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 what took place. So if you would just give us the whole story, yeah, and, then, and, sure. then, and then, sorry, but I, yeah. I just feel that because I'm mm -hmm. just sitting in and I'm... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, we, we have to teach about grammar, mm -hmm. and in the Pearson book there was a section about pronouns and using like gendered language. So I wanted to make it more engaging, so what I did is we were talking about um, in papers using they as, as like a singular. And then we were also talking about like his and hers and like how to construct sentences with that. And then to contextualize it, I brought up like a, a YouTube debate. So a debate with both sides, Jordan Peterson's sides and this this fellow named Nicholas Matt, who's also a prophet UT. Okay. And they Could you, do you know have the name of the video? Okay. Um it was from the agenda with Steve Pakin. Okay. It was like a YouTube debate. It was one hour long, but I showed about five minutes. Okay. Um and then some I mean the students were were very interested, I could tell. They're, all of their eyes were on the screen. And after when we had a debate, there were people of all opinions. And like from, from what I could see, it was a very friendly debate. Um, obviously, this person who had an issue did not express it to me. They just went straight to whoever. I don't, I don't really know what happened. So. Okay, um, just for some additional context. So uh, you come. You came from U of T, is that right? No. No, oh, you oh, from SFU. Uh, oh, from SFU. Okay, so you weren't um, like one of Jordan Peterson's students. No. Like that. Um, so just to give you some context about Jordan Peterson is he is a, a figure that's um, basically highly involved with the with the alt right. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, yes, uh, the uh, the website Rebel Media, which is a, an alt right website, has. Uh, been involved in raising multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for uh, his research. It's uh, he as as close uh, to a week and a week and a half ago, uh, he gave a lecture in which he identified student protesters um, like by posting their social media accounts so that people would uh, bully and, and threaten them online. He, he lectures about. Um, Basically, like critiquing of uh, feminism, critiquing um, trans rights. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar. Like, white I, supremacy. I, I follow like, him. Not critiquing. Okay, so, but so the thing is, can you shield people from those ideas? Am I supposed to comfort them and uh, make sure that they are insulated away from this? Like, is that what the point of this is? Because to me, that is so against what a university is about. Mm -hmm. So against it. I was not taking sides. I was presenting both arguments. Okay. So the thing is about this is if you're presenting something like this, it, uh, you have to think about the kind of teaching climate that you're creating. And this is actually, these arguments are counter to the Canadian um, Human Rights Code uh, ever since, and I know that you talked about um, C16, ever since this past, it is discriminatory to be targeting someone um, due to their gender identity or gender expression. So bringing something like that up in class, not critically, and I understand that you're trying to like... It was critical. I, I introduced it critically. How so? Like I, as in, like I said, I, it was in the spirit of debate. Okay, in the spirit of the debate is slightly different than being like, okay, this is this is a, like a problematic idea that we want to, maybe want to unpack. But that's but, taking sides. Yes. Like, it's taking sides for me to be like, oh, look at this guy. Like, everything that comes out of his mouth is BS, but we're going to watch anyway. Okay. So, I understand the position that you're coming from and your positionality, but the reality is that it has created a, to a, a toxic climate for some of the students. It, you know, it's, how many? it's great that... Who? <laughs> like, how many? Okay. One? May I, may I speak? 
I'm uh, just, I have is... no I have no concept of of like how many people complained like what their complaint was you haven't showed me the, the complaint yes I, I understand that this is upsetting but there's also confidential confident confidentiality matters the number of people is respect. confidential yes okay. is one or multiple students who have come forward saying that this is something that they were concerned about and that it made them uncomfortable if this is for example a trans student this is basically debating whether or not a trans student should have rights within one of their classes um, and that's not something that is really acceptable in the context of the kind of learning environment that we're trying to create it would be a, the equivalent of debating whether or not uh, you know a student of color should have rights or, or should be allowed to, to be married uh, do you see where like how this is not this is not something like that's intellectually neutral that is kind of up for debate this I mean this is the Charter of Rights and but Freedoms. it is up for debate but I mean you're perfectly welcome to your own opinions mm -hmm. but when you're bringing it into the context of the classroom that can become problematic and that can become something that is that creates an unsafe learning environment for students. But when they leave the university, they're going to be exposed to these ideas. So I don't see how I'm doing a disservice to the class by exposing them to ideas that are really out there. And I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm stressed out because this That's to me okay. is so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. Can I mention the yeah. gendered violence, um, gendered and sexual violence policy? Yeah, please. So under that, um, it does, gendered violence doesn't just include sexual violence, but it also includes um, targeting folks based on gender. Um, so that includes transphobia, biphobia, homophobia, all those sorts of things are protected under the policy. And so those are things that Laurie has um, upheld as values, as well as the Ontario Human Rights Code. Um, and so those are things that we're responsible for um, uh, not um, impacting our students in that way and not um, not spreading transphobia in that way. Okay, so the, the, what I have a problem with is I didn't target anybody. Who did I target? Trans folks. How? By telling them ideas that are really out there? By telling them that? By telling them? Really? It's, it's not just telling them in legitimizing this as a valid perspective, as this is another valid perspective. In a university, all perspectives are valid. That's not necessarily true. Lindsay. Well, this this is something that's being debated in current society, and I don't feel the need to shield people from what's going on in society. Like, okay. to, to imagine that this is happening in university, it's just it's bad. Okay, bad. so just to give you a context, also within all of this that is happening, um, Laurier's being blanketed with white supremacist um, posters currently. Um, there's another debate in society, which is whether or not North America should be a, a set of white nationalist states and that it should be ethnically cleansed of other people. That is also a current debate in society. Would you show something in your tutorial that you had, you know, white supremacists and, and non-white supremacists debating whether or not other people should live in North America. Is that something that you would show? Um, if that was related to the content of the week and we were talking about right-wing speech bubbles, maybe. Okay. It depends on the content. Like, I mean, if there's really ideas that are existing out there like that, then, I mean, look, the thing is, like, I don't see what's transphobic about showing a video of Jordan Peterson. He's a real person. He is, he's, he's out there. He is a real person, but he is a real person who has engaged in targeted behavior that, uh, or, or, or targeting of, of trans students um, in a particular, like, like basically doxing them, uh, if you know the term, like giving out their personal information so that they will be attacked, uh, harassed, so that death threats will find them. Um, this is something that he has done to his own students is done to other students um, and this is also something that the students are aware of so this is this is basically like playing not to kind of do the thing where everything is kind of compared to, to, to Hitler but this is like neutrally playing 
uh, a speech by, by Hitler or, or Milo Yiannopoulos from Gamergate. This is the kind of thing that departmentally, in terms of like critical communication studies and in terms of the course of what we're trying to do, is diametrically opposed to everything that we've been talking about in the lectures. Was this one of the reasons that you wanted to do this? Because it was like a, a reaction to the lecture content? And the... No, we were talking about gendered language. And I was asking them to structure sentences using say or using his or her. And then we talked about the societal context of it. Okay. So I don't get why I'm being seen as transphobic <laughs> by yeah. virtue, by proxy of me just, just saying just stating, just exposing people to an idea. I, I don't get how that label is not attached to me. I really don't. It's more about the effect rather than the intention. If that, like, obviously that wasn't your intention, but nevertheless, it disturbed and upset students enough. So everything's about those students who are disturbed? Everything is catered to them? Can I um, yeah, just please, offer a right. different perspective? Um, were you, was this um, a tutorial based on looking at grammar? Mm -hmm. And it was focused on the use of pronouns and the use of grammar. Mm -hmm. um, is grammar not something that's not really subject to debate? The, the they and the his or her, it's a huge debate right now. Can yeah. we use they in the singular? Yeah, but you do know that they has actually been used in the singular. Yeah, that was in the video I showed to the class, and okay. that's a point I made. And the thing is, what's, what's kind of funny is I disagree with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I disagree, but um, you guys seem to think that <laughs> I'm like pro Jordan Peterson or something. It's pretty funny. Well, it, it, from Sorry. the... the do you mind if I, sorry, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm here for a different, you know, like just as the MA cast coordinator. My, 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 my issue with Jordan Peterson, I'm going to come at it from a different angle, is that as an academic and scholar in this institution, or any institution in which my research in that is subject to peer review, right? And you know what peer review mm -hmm. is, right? So regardless of what I believe, if I'm to be published in scholarly journals and that, it has to be, um, my research has to be demonstrated to be able to be reproduced in the methods and theories that are used to reproduce it. I might believe X, but my academic freedom, as I understand it, does not just give me the freedom to, to spout off. If I'm tenured and they can't fire me, I mean, there was a case of Charles Murray, he used to do this about race at Western, wasn't it Western? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he, he, published stuff by publishing companies that didn't do peer review because they wanted what he had. So what he was actually teaching his students were ideas that were not substantiated by methods or theories that methods and theories that could be reproduced in a um, academic analytical way that other people could reproduce and get the same results. He had already predetermined the outcome. It's much the way a lot of these right-wing think tanks like the Fraser Institute, that their form of research can't be done in traditional academic journals because they've already predetermined the outcome. For myself, regardless of what I believe, I won't teach anything in any of my classes if it is not something that is substantiated by evidence that can be reproduced according to peer review. I might tell students, I believe X, I have, I have no expectations that they will reproduce anything that I think because I don't expect them to. But I, I say, I believe X because of what I've read. But for me, as I teach the students in the second year Com Studies Theory courses, you know, opinion minus evidence, I know it's a bit simplistic, opinion minus evidence equals prejudice. In the case of Jordan Peterson, and I'm not super well versed, but I have done reading and looking at none of his, uh, cont his contentions about the Human Rights Code, the fact that people can be jailed for, um, I mean, you've probably, if you follow him, you would know that he claims you could be jailed when Bill C-16 was being uh, discussed. He was claiming that you could be jailed if you misgendered, like you used the wrong pronoun for someone. Um, what struck me is that none of what he proclaims and sometimes the way he proclaims it, I think he tries to 
uh, defend him or act like he doesn't yet know um, is done in ways which are academically suspect to say the least. Like there is nothing from what I've read and researched, and which is again, like I would say, I'm not as extensive on, on, on researching him. He does not have the substantial ac academic evidence to be a credible person. It's like some of the climate change deniers that are given a 50-50 chance with meteorologists. You know, um, scientists never proclaim 100%, right? Because the scientific method cannot demonstrate, you know, no scientist says this is 100% certain, right? Because that's the nature of scientific inquiry, just like social scientific inquiry. In the same way, though, meteorologists do not teach in first year geology or meteorological classes that there's a debate, even if in the public sphere, there are people that want to believe, and it's a very high number, higher in Alberta than perhaps Ontario, um, higher in certain parts of the United States, like Texas, who believe that you know fossil fuels do not contribute to global warming. But that is not a credible academic, scholarly, scientific position. And I think to present to, as if there's two sides to a debate when it's substantially, there is not an academic credible, that becomes problematic. Um, and I'm just, I'm approaching this from the, the point of view of, um, of, the, of the institution. We, we are legitimizing positions that don't have credible evidence, just like Charles Murray with his race um, claims of white superiority. When you're doing that, you, and I mean, never mind the fact that there's also the issue of the, um, uh, the fact that uh, a certain grouping of students will be subject to having their rights subject to what the majority thinks without. Um, so I just, I mean, just purely from the matter of it, and I'm, I'm I, what I'm doing is just op operating from a different position here in saying that. I, as a scholar, as a, someone with tutorial leaders, I would find it problematic if my tutorial leaders were representing positions that didn't have any substantial um, academic credibility to that evidence. As but if he's still a public figure, like, yes, he has an, an academic credential, but this was in, in, on a TV show. He's, there's, he's still a public figure. Like. He, he's a public figure, and uh, there's a lot of people there, like Richard Spencer, leader of, I don't like calling them alt-right. Uh, yeah. It gives them too much legitimacy. But Richard Spencer, um, right? Uh, I mean, the Nazis actually used, uh, this is a historical, um, issues around the free speech idea in the 1920s in Weimar, Germany, as an issue around which, which is what they're using now. We, we know, though, that someone like Richard Spencer is using theories and, and ideas which don't have any academic credibility. He's a public figure. But in terms of uh, if we introduce someone, we give them greater credibility in a certain condition. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree that there are public figures out there that um, bring people, um, that, you know, bring hatred, uh, that target groups, um, and if you look at, I mean, you can look at statistically the, the degree of suicide attempts as trans, as trans people, young people, it's, it, it's the highest of any group in society, and, you know, it's, you go through indigenous people, right, and so on. I mean, there are things that don't have academic credibility and I just don't think, I, I personally think I have some problems, I have no problems with um, the fact that these things are out there and people are going to engage them, but we have to think of the atmosphere we also create for, for the learning process, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's, I mean, anyways, that's... I, I've to go back to your question before, is it, is it just for those people who were upset about this or, or, or felt like threatened by this? There's something called the, the tyranny of the majority. It's that if you, you want to create an environment that has the ability for everybody to learn, that's not going to, to, um, to block people out just because they are like um, the minority within a particular group, or they might n not feel comfortable like voicing that they have like problems with that material in that space because you're an authority figure in that space. You're also a representative of the class and the department and the school 
in that space. Um, and this is why it becomes, like, do you understand how it could become an issue? Like, I understand why you made the choice, like, that you wanted to kind of present this as an issue um, and to talk about and to bring it out there, uh, et cetera. It's more about trying to understand what the impact of that choice was and why it might not have been the best choice for this context. I mean, I can see why people would think that. But and like, I mean, like I wouldn't do it again. Maybe not this exact case. But you would do something similar again. Like, just that's your principles that you feel like it would have to be like a completely balanced view. Like, no, it, I don't believe in like a false notion of balance. But um, yeah, I just like for me, like I, I'll say it again. Like the university is about exposing people to ideas and. I just don't get, I don't get why you have to think a certain way or that, because, because from what I'm getting in this room is if you don't think a certain way, it's not credible. And not, not about the academic um, credibility stuff, but from a, like a public figure point of view. And the thing is, like, like I said, I disagree with what he says, but I'm still open to listening to people. I'm open. And these students were not open. They're not open to, to learning new things. Okay, so hearing other perspectives. So that the students, your position is that the students were wrong. I I'm not saying they were wrong. I'm saying they not were they were not open to a new perspective, and okay. I find that unfortunate. Okay. Um. Like part of university is personal development, and that means becoming like a stronger person, and challenging your beliefs and stuff, so. Okay. Do you understand how what happened was contrary to, sorry, what was the, the, the policy? The, uh, gendered the gender, and sexual violence. Gendered and sexual violence policy. Like, do you understand how? But, sorry, what did I violate in that policy? Um, so, gender-based violence, uh, transphobia in that policy, causing harm. Um, to trans students by uh, bringing their identity as invalid or their uh, pronouns as invalid or something else potentially pretty invalid. So I caused um, harm, which is violence. under the Ontario Human Rights Code, a protected thing, and also something that Laurier holds as a value. Okay, so by proxy of me showing you the video, I'm transphobic and I caused harm and violence. So be it. I, I can't do anything to control that. <laughs> okay, so that's not something that you have an issue with? The fact that that happened? Like, I mean, I'm, I that know that I know in my heart and I know I expressed to the class that I'm not transphobic. And if, if any of them, I don't know, again, I don't know what they said, but I made my, I don't think I gave away any kind of political position of mine. I remained very neutral. And uh, I, that's... Kind of the problem is that if you're framing something that is like this, like just to, to give you the example of like in, in lecture, uh, I also showed something that was from like a member of the alt-right. Um, uh, were you there for the, uh, when I played the Guns Unlimited video, talking about yeah. the 3D printing, etc. So this is someone who also has like a site like the ones that fund Jordan Peterson, like Patreon. Um, like they bucket of the alt right white supremacist website that, that basically uses that gets funding for these projects if they get kicked off of things like like Indiegogo, uh, etc. Um, but I framed it by saying those kinds of things by actually bringing out the the critical perspective to just present um, information like this neutrally. It can help cultivate an environment where these these kinds of, of, of opinions, like uh, alt-right opinions, white supremacist opinions, anti-trans uh, opinions, anti-gay opinions, anti-women misogynist opinions, where those can feel like it's a space where those kinds of opinions can be nurtured and created. Um, and that's the kind of the, the frame on why some kinds of content we would use in class and some we wouldn't use, or we would only use those for upper year classes or grad students, 
Like, for example, in one of your classes, it might be appropriate to watch uh, a white supremacist like recruitment video, something that Richard Spencer has done, because there are students with more critical faculties that have been exposed to more things, that have had more time to kind of process. These are very young students, um, and something of that nature is not appropriate to that age of student because they don't 18? have... 18? Yes. They're adults. Yes, but they're very young adults. They don't have the, 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 uh, the critical toolkit to be able to take it apart yet. This is one of the things that we're, we're teaching them. And so this is, this is why it becomes something that has to be done with a bit more care. I get what you mean about presented. framing it. Like, I, I remember when you, when you talked about the 3D um, printing of the guns and how you said it was problematic. And, like, in retrospect, yeah, I should have used that word, problematic. That, that would have been a good word to frame it. Well, that's good that you acknowledge that, especially since you're saying that, you know, this is not something that you agree with. This is not something that you're trying to, to promote. It's just that you're trying to open up the debate. But the problem is that th that particular debate is about whether trans people are people or not. Does that make sense? Um, it's a, it's a language issue, and you can extend it to whether you want to extend it to personhood and, or not. And I did you, present that argument. I did present okay. the argument that by denying people their pronouns, you are denying their dignity. Mm -hmm. I, I stated that argument. Okay. But do you understand if you were a trans person in that class, or if the topic was, you know, if women should have the vote, do you think that, that might, you might find that problematic? Do you think that that might not be something that was just kind of academically related to your identity and rights, but something that was fundamentally create, like related to your identity and rights? Sorry, what's the question again? Like that if you, if you were a trans person, in that class, do you think that that might not have just been like an academic question that was something that was up for debate, but rather that that was something that you immediately felt impacted you and made the learning institution that you are, are paying to attend a place where you're feeling like your identity is being questioned and, and up for debate? Would I? feel that way if I was a trans person. I mean, it's kind yeah. of hard for me to say because it, it kind of ties into like who people are as individuals and how strong mm -hmm. they are and how willing they are to engage with ideas. Like, okay. so I don't know if I can make any generalization about... Is your position that these students were not strong I'm, enough I'm, to be able to withstand this kind of critique? Um, I mean, if someone was attacking women in front mm -hmm. of me, which it, it does happen, mm -hmm. I feel strong enough in my position to be able to either not respond and just know in my head, yeah, that person is wrong, I, I'm fine with being a female. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know how other people might react. Like, I, I, just, I don't live in their head. It's hard for me to know. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, one of, well, one of the, yeah, well, one of the things, I mean, um, again, I, what, I, what I see is I, I have not a problem with the idea of debate at any point. What concerns me with what I know of, having been here now 16 years, um, it, and I don't know, the first years have changed in me. This is a first year class, right? Yeah. So this one. Um, but what I have found is that um, one of the things is a, a notion of confirmation bias. Uh, you've heard that phrase? Because mm -hmm. you did a conference at FSU, SFU, yeah. But one of the things is that a lot of the students that are coming in already hold very, you know, very strong opinions, um, whether or not these are opinions backed up with evidence. And my concern, you know, for, again, I'm, I'm just adopting a, a, a position of a scholar in the, in, the, in the situation here, is to say, well, we have these students that come in, they have very strong, in my experience, they've always have, and I'm teaching them in second year even, they, they have very strong opinions about X, Y, and Z, which is, you know, that's fine. But if they're going to be challenged about those opinions, it's a much, um, it's a much uh, greater deal to do that. It's the, like the world that Jordan Peterson, Ezra Levant, Rebel Media, and, and that have constructed, I find quite 
it, 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 in quite amusing in a way, or bemusing, because it's almost like the left has won and controls everything, and you're going to be imprisoned if you, you know, you don't adopt cultural Marxism politically correct. The new term cultural Marxism. I mean, I find it practically ludicrous that this is the case, given the political economic realities of Canada, Ontario, Kitchener Waterloo, this institution, precarious work, etc. So I just find it ludicrous that um, people like Ezra Levant and Jordan Peterson believe that. I mean, maybe they believe in those black helicopters that the conspiracy theorists in the States used to talk about coming to control world government. Okay. That, to me, is where a lot of that sort of thinking goes. I do know that there's people that bring in those ideas in the classes I teach. I don't feel that I'm doing my duty to challenge these already established ideas if what I present in, my, in the courses I teach and also in terms of the curriculum that communication studies as a field, as an interdiscipline of many disciplines, um, I don't feel I'm teaching critical engagement in a world where all the established dominant institutions of society reinforce a number of different types of privileges, perspectives, and prejudices, um, where the university is one of the few spaces where we can actually take people, engage them, challenge them. Um, it's not um, you know, challenging the faith-based or uh, family and other types of structures in, in society that they've been inculcated with for years and years in three hours or one hour or 50 minutes, you know, in some ways isn't going to be much of a challenge. But if in an institution which prides itself on getting to grips and having peer-reviewed academically, socially, scientifically, you know, evidence-based research is going to work to confirm the kind of biases that are based on stuff that it cannot be substantiated in an academic, credible way. I find that problematic. And I don't feel we're doing our job as an institution, simply from because we're presenting both sides. And again, I'll use the analogy of climate change. I mean, the fossil fuel industry itself knew this in the 1970s. It's like the tobacco companies with lung cancer. As early as the late 1920s, they had a really strong idea that this was happening. Further and further research showed that. I would find it problematic, given the degree of advertising and power that the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, the big tobacco lobby, at big pharma, etc., have through advertising, through the media that you've studied at SFU, that you're part of the learning process for students, to just reinforce the kind of prejudices that students bring to class. That, that to me, is something, yes, we need to challenge them, and we need to challenge them, and I challenge them with ideas that I don't even necessarily believe in, in 203, but because they're substantiated, and my colleagues require me to teach them to prepare students better for third and fourth year, I'm happy to teach those things. I know it'll, I hope, it'll make every student, but maybe some, rethink what they think. If they come around to, you know, they can believe what they say, they can say what they believe, right? You're, everyone's entitled to their opinions. But we have a duty as educators, as scholars, as academics, even as public intellectuals, to make sure that we're not furthering the kind of, um, I would call it charlatanism, uh, I think Jordan Peterson, you know, and I know you're not a fan, but I think he actually shows a form of charlatanism um, when it comes to the academy. And he's playing this whole idea about free speech and of public debate, which is not substantiated by the fact that he has nothing really that is credible in terms of the research, including his, his stuff on pronouns. And, I, and, that, and for me, that's where I find people like Jordan Peterson problematic, is because I don't find anything credible in his, his academic research to be there. You know, I mean, there, there are other people who teach grammar that could be drawn upon to perhaps challenge this idea of the idea of using they around the notion of when you use it. But again, I would say that that's, you know, it, it, struck me, it strikes me as a little bit 
different bringing in a debate on a YouTube video about something when we're teaching grammar and talking well, about yeah. the pronouns. This, this kind of brings me back to the next point, which was kind of thinking about how to move forward. Um, because I can see why you made that choice, like the, the topic was grammar, but um, your role as TA is not really to be teaching about the politics of grammar. It, it's to be teaching grammar, um, to be teaching punctuation, to be kind of, to, to be going through these things, like to, uh, with, uh, to add clarification or discussion in relation to lecture material, but not to be bringing original content around um, side issues. Um, does that make sense? Like, has this been your kind of structure throughout was to, to bring in more, like, theoretical aspects around, like, things like spelling, punctuation, like the other topics, like how to write a thesis statement? Or was um, this like a, this one class? It was just this class. I just okay. wanted them to see how they interact with grammar on, a, on an everyday, like, in everyday life. Okay. That was the way that I framed it. And I, like, I remembered my slide, it said, like, issues in grammar. And then we, t we talked about English having gendered pronouns, and, like, it, it engaged them, like, and people were on, of all opinion, so. Okay. Um, would you be comfortable for the rest of the term to just kind of stick more to a more kind of traditional um, syllabus of, of teaching the you know, issues around grammar, but just like the particular like, sentence structure, whatever the, the topics are that we have left? Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I can't repress my personality, okay. like, but um, I mean, I don't see where the occasion would arise for me to bring in another controversial topic. Okay. Um, so just kind of thinking forward, um, just because of what seems to have been like a, a little bit of a breakdown in in communication, um, just about like what the requirements for the, the class are. Um, do you do you write out your lesson plans uh, or do, do you do, yeah. like, do slides? I write them out. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you send me your lesson plans before uh, your classes, um, just so I can kind of have a, a quick look over them? Uh, just um, to... I write them like on paper with pen, but I can take a picture. Okay. If... Yeah, but sometimes I don't decide until, I like, because we get out of the lecture at, at 5.50. I have till 8 p.m. to decide what I'm going to do based on what you've done. Okay. So, I mean, I can send it to you literally two minutes before I start, maybe. Okay, well, uh, if you can plan, like, the what we're doing in lecture should be maybe 15 minutes tops of the tutorial. The tutorial should focus on the, the skill building. Um, so I'm assuming that most of that was planned out more in advance, like if you have a lesson on sentence structure or something. Um, today I got them to email me their grammar questions, and I'm just going to answer them. Okay. All right. Um, so but going forward, if you can maybe try to, to plan a little further ahead, um, and then maybe being like, and then I'm going to talk about the lecture, that's fine. But send those to me. Uh, in advance, just so I can have a take a look at them, and um, if you have any PowerPoint slides, etc. I'll ask you not to play any more uh, Jordan Peterson videos or anything of the like. Um, if you did have something that you wanted to play in class, to kind of let me know ahead of time what it is, so I can take a look. Um, and then I'll also talk um, everything over with with my colleagues and with Peter. Um, who's the chair of the undergraduate department. Um, and then we'll talk about how to move forward from this. Does that make sense? Sorry, that's a little bit vague. Could you like specify what you mean by moving forward? That's like really general. OK, well, um, we're going to have to talk about what you said. Um, and then hopefully everything can continue and we can continue to have uh, the working relationship that we do. Um, but it's something I have to talk over with my colleagues because, frankly, some of the things that we talked about are a little bit problematic um, and we need to process them. Okay, do you know um, when you'll have an answer by? I do. Okay, so 
but basically you're telling me like the alternative to me not continuing my TA ship is it would somehow be terminated. And I'm not sure what the grounds for that would be. That's not something that is in my control. I'm not your employer. I'm your supervisor. Um, so I have to actually transmit my information to, I have to talk about it with Herbert, I have to talk about it with Peter, who's the chair. Um, I don't know, I, if, I, if I knew what the entire process is, then I would let you know. What is the process? Is I, what, I, what committee is this going to, like, I kind of need to know, like, where information about me is circulating, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know either, Herbert. Uh, um, I would only assume that it would be with Peter. Um, because you said you have to talk it over with your colleagues, so I, I don't know. Well, like my colleagues, going. Herbert, Adria, and Peter. And Peter's the chair of the department. Um, I don't have any say over your TA ship in, in any respect in that sense. But we, what we have to discuss is, you know, um, what we discussed here, and discuss that with Peter. Um, um, right is, now, I would say that this is an informal process. If it got brought to a formal process, which would be somebody makes a formal complaint and wants to go forward with that, then that would look a little bit different, I would say. Um, and then that would be based on either the gender violence policy or the harassment and discrimination policy and would go through those policies and procedures, um, which are online and available to you to look at what that would look like. Um, hopefully, it can be resolved informally. Um, but that, that's that, my hope too. Yeah. So I guess that's what Nathan was getting at by moving forward, by his phrase moving forward, that this is an informal process. I mean, it's the first time I've been involved in this process in 16 years. Um, and so I don't even necessarily know what the process is. But part of the reason why I wanted to hear your story is a complaint or complaints were made, have to hear because you know, there's two sides, right? You need to know. There's two sides. And so we needed to know that you, what you, what happened from your perspective. Right? Sure. Um, so if you can send me your lesson plans, and I might need to, uh, after talking it over with Peter, I might need to sit in on some of your tutorials um, just to kind of assess the space and see um, how things are going moving forward. Um, do you have any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming.